A $50 code reader can cost you thousands if you trust it blindly. Modern cars will hand you P codes in seconds, but those numbers can't tell you whether the problem is metal or math. The difference? An expert pulls live data on a quick road test and watches what the sensors do under load. I'll show you how that second step exposes misdiagnoses, especially on transmissions, so you avoid one-size-fits-all fixes. Stick around and you'll learn the exact verification moves top techs use before recommending any big repair. Before we move on, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like the video. So if your scanner spits out P0732 in seconds, why do so many shops still get the fix wrong? Because that fast code feels like an answer when it's really just a headline. A basic reader pulls what the car stored, diagnostic trouble codes, and a snapshot called freeze frame. That snapshot is the exact moment the computer said, something's off. And it locks in numbers like vehicle speed, throttle angle, RPM, temps, and sometimes fuel trims. Helpful, yes. Final verdict, no. Here's where people stumble. P0732 literally means the transmission reported an incorrect ratio in second gear. That's it. It doesn't tell you whether the clutches are slipping, whether line pressure dipped, whether a speed sensor glitched, whether a harness added resistance, or whether the software hit an adaptation limit trying to keep the shift clean. If you stop at the code, you're guessing. And guessing gets expensive fast. A real-world example lays it out. A mid-size sedan flags P0732 right after a highway merge. Shop A sees the code, knows that incorrect ratio often shows up before a rebuild, and writes a transmission estimate. No road test with data, no qualifiers, just the number. Shop B slows down and opens the freeze frame. It shows the event triggers between 38 and 42 miles per hour with light throttle, transmission warm, and a soft tip-in. Now the story changes. A hard parts failure usually flares under heavy load or heat. This one appears in a narrow window with gentle input. That doesn't prove the part, but it narrows the hunt to conditions where control logic, sensor handshake, or borderline pressure can stumble. This matters because OBD2 codes are symptoms, not diagnoses. The same DTC can pop on different brands for different reasons because the logic tables, expected gear math, and calibration strategies vary. One transmission might flag a ratio error after a split-second mismatch. Another waits longer or requires multiple counts before setting the light. That's why two vehicles can throw the same code and need completely different fixes. If you treat the number like a part label, you miss the engineering behind it. Think about a smoke alarm. It tells you there's smoke. It never tells you whether someone burnt toast or a wire is melting in the wall. P0732 is that alarm. The freeze frame is the smell in the air. Strong, weak, sweet, acrid. But you still need to find the source. Freeze frame data is your boundary lines. You get the speed, throttle position, engine RPM, sometimes transmission temperature, and calculated slip at the fault moment. Those details tell you when and how it misbehaved, not what failed. Light throttle at 40 miles per hour hints at a shift timing or sensor sync problem. Heavy throttle at 40 miles per hour that repeats when hot hints at pressure loss or a worn clutch. You're building a map, not circling a single part. Here's the expert move most people never see, and it happens before a wrench turns. You can separate a metal problem from a data problem by recreating the fault while watching live parameters. No parts, no guesswork. That step turns the frozen snapshot into a moving story, and the pattern exposes whether the gears can hold or the numbers are lying. So what is P0732, and why does it fool people? It's a ratio error flag that's broad by design. The computer compares input and output speeds against the expected math for second gear. When the math doesn't add up long enough to cross the threshold, it sets the code. It doesn't accuse a clutch, a sensor, a valve body, or a module. It just says, second isn't matching the table. If you leap from that to a rebuild, you're skipping the proof. Hold that thought, because top techs always run a fast second step before recommending any big spend and it happens on the road with the scanner doing more than reading codes. 
So how does a quick 10-minute road test tell you if the problem lives in the gears or in the data stream? It's simple and disciplined. You recreate the fault on purpose while watching the transmission think in real time. That short window under controlled conditions shows you whether the hardware loses grip or the numbers feeding the computer go sideways. Here's the workflow top techs use. They connect a professional scanner, not just a code reader, and open the live parameters for the transmission. Then they plan a short drive cycle on a safe stretch of road. They warm the fluid, hold light throttle, and climb through the speeds where the freeze frame said the error appears. The goal is to make the fault show itself while the scanner records what the sensors report and what the control module commands. No guesses, just a controlled replay with the data rolling. Now the tension. A mechanical slip and a bad speed sensor can both trigger P0732, but they draw opposite shapes on the graph. In a mechanical failure, the input speed stays steady. The module commands second gear, and the system shoves line pressure high to save the shift. As you add throttle, calculated slip grows because the clutch or band can't hold. The fluid might smell burnt. Adaptation values sit at their limits from the computer trying to compensate over time. That's metal, friction, and heat losing the fight. Swap it for a digital fault and the image flips. You'll see the speed sensor blip to zero or drift, maybe in sync with a bend in the harness or a bump in the road. Can messages lag for a split second? Voltage drops come and go with steering angle or small body flex. Line pressure looks normal because the hydraulics are fine. The calculated slip spikes only when the signal gets noisy, not when the engine loads the gear. The transmission isn't slipping. The data is lying. The reason this works comes down to which parameters you watch and how they move together. Input and output shaft speeds tell you the gear math. Turbine speed, often labeled NT, confirms what the converter passes into the box. Gear commanded versus gear achieved reveals whether the module got what it asked for. Torque A converter clutch slip shows if the converter is adding noise. Line pressure command versus actual exposes hydraulic headroom. Solenoid current tells you if the control side is hitting targets. Transmission temperature and adaptation counts add context about wear and correction limits. When these PIDs track logically under load, the hardware likely holds. When one signal breaks rank, you chase that circuit, not the clutches. Take a quick micro case. The fault repeats at 40 miles per hour. The tech drives there, holds light throttle, and watches the ratio drift. They use the scan tool to command manual second and, in a bi-directional bypass, substitute a stable sensor value. The ratio holds steady. That single move points away from a clutch pack and straight at the sensor circuit or a corroded connector. No pan drop, no teardown, just a targeted electrical fix. This is why one-size-fits-all part swaps keep failing on digitized transmissions. The same code spans hydraulic, mechanical, and electronic domains, and only live data under load shows which domain is misbehaving. On vehicle A, the data stack screams mechanical. Worn two to four band, scorched fluid, maxed adaptations, and rising slip with throttle. On vehicle B, the ratios go wild only when the output sensor glitches through a corroded plug while pressure and currents stay normal. The code didn't change. The interpretation did, and so did the bill. Before you approve a rebuild, ask the shop how they verified it. Ask to see the live graph, the road speed, the throttle angle, and the commanded pressure in the exact window where the code sets. Fast codes start the story. Live data under load writes the ending. Demand that second step, because the number isn't the diagnosis. You already saw how P0732 can point in two directions. The proof lives in those moving graphs during a repeatable road test. Before any big repair, tell your shop you want to see live PIDs while they recreate the fault. Ask for the speed, throttle angle, commanded gear, and pressure in the exact window where the code sets. If they can't show it, press pause. Do this and you can save thousands by verifying metal versus digital. The code alone can't tell you.